Hello, this is Matthew at COP Technical Support, and today I'm just going through the initial startup steps of Hike Central. What you're looking at on screen at the moment is the immediately after installing Hike Central version 2.6, you get your web client open up, which is our Microsoft Edge browser, and the service manager pop up, which needs to be running for Hike Central to be active in the background. Now, this is just installed on my laptop. So we can see at the top of the service manager that it's telling us that not all of the programs and ports in our Hike Central installation at the moment are being allowed through firewalls. So we're just going to click that add to allow list now. Just so we know full well, there's nothing on our local system that's stopping the server from running as we need it to. So once we've got the system installed and we're trying to access our web client, it's going to tell us that our connection isn't private. And that's because the server has HTTPS turned on by default. We're accessing the server at the moment using the local host IP address, that 127.0.0.1. If any other computer on the same site wanted to use the Hike Central web client interface, they would need to use my laptop's IP address. But because we're on the laptop, we can use that local host because the software is running on the same machine. Now what this is going to do, because it's the first time that Hike Central has been launched, is ask us for a password. So we're going to set a nice strong administrator password. And hit next. So in case we ever forget our password and we don't have a license key to reset it with because we haven't got them from the system, we can set up one of two ways of getting the password done back, either a verification code to an email or security questions. I'm going to go security questions. And just for the sake of this, because this will be uninstalled shortly after the fact, I'm just going to select questions and make sure you put in proper answer to these questions because obviously it's not something you want people to be able to guess their way through so that's all i'm throwing in there and then i'm just going to hit finish and that puts us now into the start of the hike central wizard it's asking us for a license because hike central won't work without at least one base license so i've got the trial license so I'm just going to grab that and I'm doing an online activation because my system is connected to the internet. If you're not connected to the internet, you'd need to select the offline activation. And this then works very similarly to a Hike Vision password reset. You would input your license code, you'd accept, you'd tell it it's a physical machine or a virtual machine or otherwise, and you generate a request file. That'll download to this computer. You then take that on a USB stick to another device, a computer that does have internet access, and you go to this website. On that website, it'll ask you for the request file. You upload the request file, and it'll then give you a response file. Put that response file onto your USB stick, bring your USB stick back to your server machine, and import the file that it's given you on the website and press activate. And that's how you do it in an offline system. But with an online system, which I'm going to click, I'm going to paste in my activation key. I accept, and we can read through this if necessary. And we just hit activate. That's us in. This now tells me exactly what that base license is giving me as a trial. So. That's giving me everything that I'll need, nothing untoward, nothing that we don't want, as well as an expiry date because it is only a trial license. Perfect. Top right, I'm just going to hit next. So, storage. This is for picture files, uh, local recordings. If we're just putting cameras up and we haven't got recorders or SD cards, we can have them record back to our local storage, which in this case would be our laptop. Uh, most times this isn't used and it is put through to recorders or otherwise, but it is absolutely an option. 
Uh, very much the same as if you were using a P store system, you'd be able to add that through once we add the P store in, and then it shows up effectively as another disk. But we're not making any changes on this one. We're going to leave this one exactly as is. So I'm just going to skip. It takes us then to user preference. We can give the site a name if necessary. Mine's just staying as professional. The first day of your work week, if you schedule any changes to take effect or anything that wants to run on a week by week basis, scheduled reports, temperature units for anything thermal related, mask related functions for if we're using face rec with detect mask or not, and then our calendar type. So again, I'm not changing anything on this page, I'm just going to skip. Now, I could spend a long time talking about one access, so I'm just going to sum this up nice and quickly and I'll cover the rest in another video. But if you're going to add sites that are not where your server is, if you're adding remote sites, you'd want to enable your WAN. The same as if you wanted to access the server from another site. You'd need to have your WAN access toggled on. I'll just show you what that looks like. You'd then need to put in the correct IP address and the detail required, and then do the correct port forwarding on the router to be able to push into Hike Central from off site. But for now, this is being an entirely local system. So I'm going to disable that WAN access. I have no need for it. We can also set up NTP transport protocols if necessary, HTTP or HTTPS, how it's transporting. Email settings, if we've set up your security questions and we didn't want the questions, we wanted a verification key instead, set this up straight away because without this, if your email sending isn't working and you lose your password and don't have a license key, you can't do anything anymore. You'd be locked out of your system, and then it is a phone call to either ourselves or to Hike Vision to try and get you back in. Person picture data. Now, there are people that don't want their pictures to be saved. They don't want it to be uh, encoded into a device and their likeness stored anyway. So what this does is it just takes that data and stores it in a way that couldn't be pulled from the server itself and then used for any other means. And then the last, just for address for receiving device information, nothing would need to be changed here nine times out of 10. Again, if necessary, we'll cover this one on another video. So with that, we're just gonna save and end. The network time failed there as that popped up because we didn't set up an NTP. So from here, where do we go? What's the first thing we do with our Hike Central? Well, we need to add a device. So, up to device. Again, we're getting prompts to help us through the page, just letting us know that anytime you make a change, there's a refresh icon you can make. You just click that and it'll change how the page loads. I'm just going to tell that's not prompt. So, I want to add my recorder in here. So, I'm going to select the IP address down here that correlates to my recorder, or I could click add at the top, much like in IVMS where you see the bottom half is your online devices, your top half being then devices specific that are already added into the software and the software can directly interact with. So with a tick in the box next to our recorder, add to device list, it's going to ask us for a lot of information toward the device. So this is just going to be NVR for the device name. The password is the recorder password. We're going to pull the information for the time from the device's time zone. We're going to have it create an area, much like an IVMS, a device group. I want it to pull all the cameras and resources, so the cameras and the alarm inputs, outputs, and we'll just create an area by the device name initially because I've got no other areas set up or specified yet. I'm just going to hit add. And that's it there, telling me that it's pulled everything in. Night mode camera is my camera one. That's what that device is called. And then we close that page and our NVR is added. Okay, so what next? Well, if we want to, we can have a look at the area that this is now created. And it's seen there that under Hike Central Professional, which is the parent folder of everything else, there's our NVR. We click this and it'll just tell us what's online. 
what's working, what isn't working, and if there's anything that we should expect that's causing us issues. So this page is just for our cameras specifically. If we go to alarm input, there's our inputs. If we go to our output, there's our one output. Something very worth mentioning is that if you add a device, for example, an ANPR camera, but you only import the camera and not its alarm outputs, when it comes to configuring any sort of event that would use the output, they will not show up. If your resource isn't imported and added into an area, Hike Central will not pull that resource up for you to use. So if you're looking to specifically use outputs, like with an AMPR camera to open a bollard, a, a gate mechanism, anything along those lines, make sure that you import all resources. You can get them again after the fact. If you forget, you can just come into alarm output and click add, and it'll show you a pool of any alarm outputs attached to devices that haven't been added yet. But that's just something to be wary of. So now that we've got that added in, I want to live view it. I want to see my camera. But we don't do that in the web client. We do that in the control client. So this is the control client open pop up. So my login details here. So again, I'm just going to change this server address to be my local host address because it's on my laptop. For any other computer that wanted to gain access to this at the moment, it would just be using my laptop's IP address which again we can find out and pass out as necessary using command prompt or just going into our network settings. The password is going to be the same password used to log into Hike Central. Oh, mistype. That's the problem with using such a long password. And now this is going to open up. Now, again, this is only on my laptop, so unfortunately it isn't built for Hike Central. This is one of those times where it's fantastic to say, if you're installing this, please make sure it's going on to a system that is strong enough to handle it. Okay, that's opened up on another monitor. Let's just drag that over here. So you can see here, the Hike Central is telling me, hey, you're using an awful lot of RAM here, friend. Hey, you're going to have a bad time if this carries on. So, but ignoring that for the time being, this is the control client. This is where most of our monitoring gets done. The web client, which we access through a browser, is going to be where we do most of our setup. And then the control client is where we do most monitoring. So to anyone that's used IVMS, if we go into the monitoring tab, this should look fairly familiar. It's almost the same as the main view page in IVMS. So if we drop this down now, we can see the cameras added. We can see that we've got some issues across some of the cameras. Again, it's telling me it's not working, but I can just click my camera and drag that over, drop them in, and there it is. And of course, you'd have more cameras. Oh, that hello there was from another video that I've done. Um, and that's how you pull over. If you wanted to swap to playback, you just click the big old playback button at the top. One thing that's worth mentioning very quickly while it's here and highlighted is if you make any changes in the web client while your control client is open, you have these two arrows up at the top here. This tells us that at the moment with that small red dot that something has changed in the web client that the control client is not yet reflecting. So we give that a click. It syncs the two back together. And now both pieces of the software are working in tandem with each other again. This is a good way, again, of making sure that our server that sat in a rack somewhere has the correct information. And then any time a change there is made, if we've got three computers sat out, all connecting to it using the control client just for viewership, that any time a change is made, if you get a little red dot up here next to these two arrows, make sure you give it a click. And that is the very basic introduction to Hike Central, getting a device added and how we monitoring it using the control client. There'll be more videos like this one to follow covering different things within Hike Central. But today, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.